Hello and welcome disc golf fans to European Pro Tour stop number four. We are on site at Kurvima Disc Golf Course and we're here with the TD Tarnmo. How are we doing today Tarnmo? We're doing fine, thank you Nathan. How are you? It's good to see you. Uh, I'd love to learn a little bit about you and how you became the TD of uh, one of the largest events in Estonia. Yeah, well, um, I've been playing disc golf for about nine years now and been doing it kind of like semi-professional for, for the last seven ones, seven years and um, yeah, introduced by a friend and that lead to it. I mean, it's, it's like with everybody, if you throw one once, then you throw it twice and further. Um, yeah, and I've been with Prodigy Disc from 2017 when I was asked to be the captain of Street Team Estonia. Back then it was three team politics, but then it was divided into countries. And uh, yeah, been the member of, uh, been the captain of three team Estonia ever since, and also a team player for the Europe European team. So and um, me and Martin, Martin Rotmeister, good friend of mine, and he's been the TD for this event for the couple of previous years. But now I've taken the, the bigger role, and he's uh, he's he's the co assistant TD for for this year. Yeah. So the the Estonian Open has has been a large event here for yeah. many years. I believe the last yeah. Estonian Open, 2019. Yeah, that was the last one. Yeah. This is the first time that the Estonian Open is on the the European Pro Tour. Yes. How did that relationship come about, and what are some of the long term goals that you have by joining up with the the EPT? Well, we will. We were asked pretty early when the tour idea came about. I was approached by by the Prodigy guys from Prodigy Europe guys from Eto. And they say that he has his new big tour in mind with uh, uh, with co co uh, cooperation with uh, the National Baron Discoff and um, this new tour. Uh, we've been a part of Euro Tour for I don't know, let's say five six years. First Estonian Open was 2013. So and I think back then there was no Euro Tour. It was part of I can't remember what tour back then but it's been a part of Euro Tour since 2015 and then now European Pro Tour um, I think this is this is the new new way of doing things it's very similar to the the disc of Pro Tour in the States um, I think the standards are pretty similar and I mean Estonian Open has always been the, one of the highlights of Estonian disc golf um, we've had many many of great US players um, I mean, you, Nate, um, Eagle, Macbeth, uh, Paul Macbeth, uh, Wysocki, I mean... James Conrad, guys, yeah. Kevin Jones, Kevin I Jones, everybody, I yeah. mean, and uh, they always love to come in here. Unfortunately, this year, they're not here. But, I mean, um, the long-term goal is, is to be the biggest event uh, maybe in Europe. Let's see. <laughs> So this is the first year that uh, Kurvema is going to have live yeah. coverage uh, throughout yes. the course. Uh, what, what professional can the, live coverage. Professional so, yeah, live yeah. coverage, <laughs> thank you. What, what can the viewers expect uh, from the, the style of play that we're going to see this weekend? I think they will see a lot of technical shots. It's pretty wooded and most of, most of the course is pretty wooded. So I think a lot of maybe like those uh, shape, shaping shots with uh, fairways, maybe power shots with mid-ranges. Um, yeah, uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful forest of Estonia. Yeah. Uh, hi, uh, I know that uh, this golf is uh, extremely popular here in Estonia and uh, you have so many amazing players. How is the public interest on like spectator level? How do you expect to see a lot of people coming here to watch this event? We really hope so. I mean, um, we have long ways to go comparing to Finland and last weekend. <laughs> but I mean, uh, I think uh, on Saturday we're hoping to see about 500,000 people. We hope so. Last time in 2019 we had about 800 people uh, spectating on the last day. Um, of course, uh, US players play a big role of uh, spectators coming over here and watching it um, on site rather than from live and also this year we have actually yeah, the professional live coverage so I think people will hopefully tune in for the live coverage yeah but I mean uh, overall uh, yeah we have people are interested in watching this golf and uh, especially like uh, those who randomly kind of randomly get to the event say oh there's like a big disc of the guys are throwing frisbees let's let's come and go and follow so that's also a big, big way of um, of people, you know, 
seeing and getting to know the, the, the sport. Thank you. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about the evolution of the course as far as design and, and uh, everything with the property? Yeah, the, the pro course that uh, the, um, the competition is taking place on is, uh, is, was put down in 2016. Uh, a huge role uh, was by uh, Seppo Bayo. Uh, he was one of the course designers here with with Martin, the GoTD, and his team back then. Also, a lot of volunteers in in uh, in this in this region at Aiguido. Um, uh, but yeah, the pro course is pretty much as it is right now. It hasn't the holes hasn't been changed uh, a lot. Uh, the last hole is a bit shorter and uh, a bit uh, the bas pos uh, basket position is a bit to the left than it used to be because of the Sonos installed on the last hole. But and the 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 first hole that we're playing in the tournament is uh, in the original layout is not the or actually the hole one. But I mean we're we're having a bit of an extended layout uh, from the from the actual um, original layout. And the wooded fairways are, are such lush green meadows. How did that come about? just a beautiful I mean beautiful landscape of here I mean those uh, this is it's uh, I mean the, the the place the center really takes care of the course and then uh, they especially this weekend they're putting uh, full force to it and uh, so as we so I mean um, yeah it's just, just natural, beautiful, yeah just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful landscape property and, and yeah, it's just beautiful uh, property yeah really well manicured yeah really yes. yeah we're thankful for the for the resort for their hope Well, thanks for joining us here today, Tarmo. We're looking forward to the event. Is there anything else that you would uh, like uh, the viewers at home to to know before? Yeah, please uh, come to Kurama, uh, everybody. And uh, if you can't come, unfortunately, then please tune in to the live coverage. I want to thank all the sponsors, main ones, Prodigy Disc Europe, uh, Sportland, Kurama Hike and Ski Resort, and you guys for doing this. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for having thank me. You. Thank you. Thank you. We're here with Thomas Hutiainen out of Finland. How are we doing today, Thomas? We are doing fine. Thanks for asking. You, you've done quite the traveling this year. Can, can you let the viewers at home know where, where all of you been already this season? 
Yeah, so this season I started uh, my season in States uh, in uh, April, early April, and then I was in state for three months, traveling and playing the uh, competitions there. Then I came back and uh, came straight to Estonia, then Norway, then Finland, and now back to Norway. I'm in Estonia, so quite a bit traveling this year so far. It looks like you you were kind of struggling um, in, in the states, and on 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 your trip back to to Europe, you've kind of found found your stride. You took third. At the Estonian event at Alutuguse, and then second at the Tuni event, can you talk to us? Was there anything specific that changed that saw saw, saw this caching streak? Uh, yeah, I was definitely struggling a bit earlier this season. I think it was because I had put so much work during the off season, and then going to states. Like, of course, I was thinking about playing good and better than ever before. And uh, it didn't work that well right at the starting of the season. But uh, then I, when I came back to Europe, I was feeling more like relaxed and easy to go to play. And I don't know, it's something with the players from the United States. It's like puts pressure on me. I can feel that. And when they are not here, it's, it feels easier, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. No, we're, we're all curious at home. You know, we know that Europe has so many amazing players, but we have seen a trend over the past few years that they can't seem to to play to their potential when they travel over there. So it's good to hear from someone such as yourself that maybe it's just because of the pressure that, you, that you're putting on yourself when you travel over there. Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's a big trip to go there. And of course, you like want to compete against the best and it adds some pressure for sure. So this is not your first time at Cordvema? Uh, no, I think it's my second time. I think I played this event twice before, so yeah. like third time now. And and it seems to be on par with, with courses uh, f from your homeland, just super technical wooded track with, with a lot of OB. How do you feel like your game is setting up for this weekend's competition? Uh, I mean, I like the course a lot and uh, we played a couple rounds today and uh, I was feeling re really good about my game and I like the holes and I think it's uh, it's maybe not the best course for myself but I really like playing here and it's an awesome course so I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> well, I, I know that you, you tend to travel with uh, with a crew of superstar disc offers. Can, can you talk to us about who you've been traveling with for the past few weeks in Europe and, and how how that crew uh, kind of uh, helps you be become the player that you are today. Yeah, so uh, now when I came back to Europe, I've been traveling with my friends Jona and uh, Samuel Hanninen for the most. And uh, I think it's really good because we'll known each other for like seven years or something like that. And almost every summer we tour together. So it's like, it it's easy to go with the same people and it it helps to play well when you have guys that are also playing well so it's like it's a competition in the like a place where we stay for the week so nobody wants to be the last on the <laughs> airbnb so <laughs> yeah, it helps yeah it's a good good crew to be competing with to, to not take last place there yeah. <laughs> so you did qualify for the usdgc at uh olutuguse and then yona yeah. qualified in, 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 Sula. in Sula. so you yeah. guys will be making the trip together as well yeah. as Niklas? Yeah. All right. Oh, sure. You guys are really holding it down for, for, for your country. <clears throat> Could you tell us a little bit about your uh, disc golf journey? Like where did it begin and, and maybe some highlights or, or something about the experience? Yeah. So I started playing like 10 years ago. I think this is my 10th year. And uh, I accidentally started playing. <laughs> I didn't like tried to go and play it's just like I found the disc from the store and then I bought them and went to try out and <laughs> I didn't like it at first but like next summer after that I started to like it more and more and it just kept going more and I don't know I got hooked <laughs> for sure okay so nobody actually introduced you to the game you just found it through the culture uh, yeah it's kind of my me and my uncle we both like found the discs quite the same time i think and then he was like do you want to go try out with me and i was like yeah for sure we can go and that's that's how it started 
So Thomas, you've you've played several events on the Disc Golf Pro Tour as well as uh, several of these European Pro Tours. How do you feel like they compare, and and how do you see the European Pro Tour evolving to to kind of match the the events that are going on in the states? Yeah. So actually, this is only my second time playing the Euro Pro Tour, but I think they are putting much work into it, and it it's starting to feel like almost the same as competing in states. I think it's getting better and bigger and it's not far away from competitions in states. I would say that from myself. Uh, hi Thomas. Uh, hi. hi. <laughs> nice to have you here and uh, I want to thank you for the show that you put up in, in Tuni uh, a few weeks ago. Um, how um, how about your like long term plan and what do you have like what are your expectations for for the future for the coming years for your own yeah career so uh, i want to play this golf as my like job and do it as long as i can and like work with the game like doing social media and stuff like that and uh, i see myself doing it for as long as i can and that's my like plan to do it professionally and as my job. Yeah, that's great to hear. Uh, it was really nice to see you in Tuni and also like earlier this summer when it feel, felt like something just like clicked in your game and finally started to, to work. Yeah. How important is that confidence to have in your back coming into this like next European Pro Tour stop now? Uh, it helps, yeah. definitely. I mean, I played the first European Pro Tour for myself in Tuni and it went well, so I'm feeling good playing the second one. I don't know, it's it's just like, it gives me confidence to play the next event because I know I played well in the first one I played. <laughs> so w will you be going to the All-Star event in Spain? Uh, I haven't decided yet, but maybe, let's see later this year. Okay, how about Turku? Actually, I think I'll going, I will be going back to States during that week, so... Not I available think then. I will skip that one this year. Okay. All right. Uh, you have anything else? Yeah. Thomas, thanks for joining us here today. Good luck at this weekend's competition. Is there anything that you'd like the viewers to know at home? Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I want to thank my sponsors and I want to say that everyone home at home, what's the live stream and what's the post coverage? It's it's good for the game and I think there's gonna be good shots and hopefully anyone, everyone enjoys watching it. All right, may all your shots on hole one land in bounds. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs>and we're here with Katie Tate out of Tartu, Estonia. It's good to see you. Thank you. So you've been competing since 2017. 
And recently, uh, you've made a name for yourself traveling to the United States and playing in professional events. How how did you go from from playing disc golf in Tartu to 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 being an international star? Uh, actually, it was a surprise for me. If uh, you would have asked me that uh, one year ago, I would be surprised. So it was a big surprise. It just happened. I was at the right time at the right place. So, so we'd love to hear more about that. Was it, was it uh, your relationship with the competitions that, 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 that grew? Did you just feel like you became a good enough player to, to, to travel? Or, or was, was there something else incentivizing you to, to, to make that leap? I think it was my fourth place at the European Championships and then my first place at the Estonian Championships. And after that, I got a good uh, like agreement with Latitude. So they helped me with that decision. Yeah, so you, you, you were up and down. You started your season up and down in the U.S. And, and since missing cash at the Dynamic Disc Open, you've, you've cashed at every event that you've played in. Can, can you share a little bit how you, you made that leap and, and what specifically with your game has started to click? I think at first it was just too early season because in Estonia we are not used to play big tournaments in February or March. Or it's too cold here at that time. So I think at first it was too early, just I wasn't maybe ready. And of course it's easier to cash in Estonia and in Europe. I think. You think so? Yeah. So you, have you played the Kurvima course before in previous Estonian Opens? Yeah, I played it I think two or three years ago. What are your thoughts on the course and, and how do you feel like uh, your playstyle sets up for it? Uh, I love this course because it's a forest course and I love forest course and I love this course especially, yeah. Yeah, so you, you, you did just have your best finish in, in a major, uh, taking 14th place at the United States Women's Disc Golf Championship. Um, how, how does it feel beating players like Ella Hansen and, and, and Paige Pierce, one of the greats all time? Yeah, I would say that I don't feel great if I beat Paige. It's not my goal to beat someone. I was just happy about my play. Yeah. Yeah, we, we love that. <laughs> And Kristen Tatar is currently dealing dealing with an injury. We won't see her at the, at this performance this weekend. But you guys have developed a strong friendship over the years. How how do you feel like uh, competing with one of Estonia's best players and traveling international with her has affected your career? Uh, it's very good to travel with her and be with her because uh, she has so much experience and she's helping me a lot. So I'm really grateful. Uh, hi, uh, I'm uh, Victor Togestad, commentator on uh, Disc Golf mm -hmm. Stream. Uh, I'm curious what you consider to be your biggest strength in the game of disc golf and how these strengths suits on this course that you're playing this weekend. I think my uh, best shot is a straight shot with butter and uh, hitting the gaps. So this is the reason why I love uh, playing in the forest. I think I'm a strong player in the forest. Okay, so you, you consider that these strengths suits on this yes. course. That's yeah. good to hear. Mm -hmm. Hi, Andrew Gum, also mm -hmm. part of the commentary team. Um, how did you find out about disc golf initially? Uh, my friends asked me to go play. It was uh, mid-winter, so it was very cold. It was snowy. But we had uh, like a break from university at that time, so we had a lot of time. And we, after one time, we went to play every day with cold and snow. <laughs> wow! So you fell right in love with it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. Um, do you have any any uh, expectations or uh, goals for your career? Anything you want to achieve? I don't think about it so much. I just uh, go one step at a time and uh, I just want to feel good uh, tournament after tournament and be happy about my play. That's a great attitude. It sounds like it's working really well for you as well. Thank you. Anybody else?
Well, thanks for joining us, Katie, and uh, good luck at the competition this weekend. Is there anyone that you'd like to thank out there watching? Yeah, my family. My family is my biggest fans, and I know they're watching, so thank you. Best of luck to you. Thank you. and we're here with Jesse Nieminen out of Kuopio, Finland. It's good to see you today, Jesse. Yeah, thank you. You too. Jesse, you're the third highest rated 
player out of Finland, what does that mean to you to, to, to be known as one of the best players from a country that is blowing up? Uh, of course it means a lot, but uh, mostly I value because I have been pretty long time like highest rated or at the top guys at the, in Finland. So I'm just gonna try to stay stay at the top and play my own game. So yeah. And you just took sixth place at the European Open. You were only bested by one other Finn in Nicholas Antela, the current highest rated Finn and current European champion. What does that sixth place finish mean to you? And 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 how did it set up with your expectations going in into the tournament? Well, of course, it means a lot because there's always high pressure when you're playing at your home crowd and all that. But I maybe a bit under, like didn't maybe play at my best level. I feel like because I have played always well at the beast, so I was kind of disappointed, but kind of not. But I was mostly happy because I got the four good decent rounds in like no bad rounds at the so that's always good so it was a good like whole thing for me whole tournament for me yeah you did win a tournament at the beast this year on the european tour at nokia yeah and you've competed at two european pro tours at yardva and and the tuni event where you, where you took top 10 We'd love to hear what your thoughts are on the European Pro Tour and how promising it feels for 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 someone such as yourself to have a career where you don't necessarily have to travel to the States to, to be seen on live coverage and post-produced rounds. I think it's the next step and it has been for the first year, it has been great. So the all events have been run well and all that. So of course it means a lot. I want to go to the States. I will go to the USDTC this year. I got the spot from European Open, so that will be my debut there. So, but yeah, it's great to have a tour in Europe. You can play full time and still make you need. So yeah. And we'd love to hear your thoughts on the track that we will be playing this week, Quarter of Emma. We're going to be playing three rounds here. How do you feel like uh, your game sets up with the, this style of play? Mm, maybe not the best for me. I think there's a lot of technical holes here, not as much as long holes, which is good for me. But I think the forehand isn't as much used here. I think so. But I think I think if I have a good day, I can shoot really hot here. But if the, I have a off day, I can blunder and play really really bad. So yeah, have to see. Hi, Victor Torgestad, commentator on this golf stream. Uh, I um, think it's <laughs> interesting. You are still you are one in the generation of uh, Finnish players who are still very young, still improving a lot every single year. But it still feels like you have been around for so long time, and you have so many even younger players popping up behind you. How does that feel? Is that something that is like stressing you, or is it inspiring? No, nah, it doesn't stress me, but yeah, I feel old here. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was like eight years ago I was in the lead card in Finnish Pro Tour first time. So, and I have played like 10, 11 years, I think. So I'm kind of old to the like Europe and Finnish Tour kind of now. But yeah, it's always great to have new people. And there's so much young talent coming from Finland and all over Europe. So. And you can see it at the European Open, there's so many Finnish players at the top, so close to the top, so yeah, it's great. No stressing for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and as I said, it, you are one of those in that generation that we always mention before a tournament starts. It's you, it's Niklas, it's Lauri Lehtinen and Väinö Mäkkälä. Um, who do you see as the, your biggest competitors this weekend here? Uh, well, Niklas also always is like the top guy because I think he is the most steady player. He doesn't play really bad tournaments. All when he plays bad, he always finishes like top ten, top five. So he's always gonna be like the toughest rival. And Lauri, of course, he has uh, so much talent and such a big variety of shots you need here. So I think those two guys are gonna be the guys to beat 
this year, this uh, this weekend. Thank you. I'm sure it's going to be a tight race. Yeah. Hi, Andrew Gum, commentary team. How did you discover the game of disc golf? Hmm. Actually, found it in a track and field event. Like, I think it was 11 years ago when I still I threw javelin and mostly like throwing sports in track and field, but. Uh, I found that there was a course near our field, and uh, I like, what is that? I thought, and then I found out. I got a couple of discs. I didn't play as much, but then I injured my uh, elbow, so I couldn't throw javelin anymore. So then I started playing disc golf, and here we are, <laughs> ten years ago. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. So nobody introduced you to it. You just saw some baskets and people yeah. playing, and uh... yeah, I just saw some baskets. I think. So many young Finnish people found the sport like that. So yeah. Have Have you had any problems with your uh, elbow injury after the javelin with disc golf? Or yeah, yeah, every year kinda. But I don't know if it's from that or it's from disc golf. I think the throwing throwing motion is different. But I haven't thrown like overhand shots after that because it's it hurt at the first year so I didn't throw but I think maybe I need to revisit that shot during the winter or something. Yeah. Your forehand is just butter smooth. How did you develop that skill and technique? I think it comes from the throwing sports, the javelin, discus, all that because it just feels way more natural for me to throw a forehand than a backhand. Like this year I always had a backhand but this year has been uh, massive struggle for me with the backhand I have like there's putting yips and I think I have the backhand yips I can't throw a backhand in tournament like I threw three backhands the whole European Open I just couldn't do it so I'm guess I'm gonna do it here too I don't know I try to throw the backhand but it's hard so yeah I have to get rid of the yips or something yeah okay thank you Yes, hey, congrats on all your success this year on your finish at the European Open and qualifying for the USDGC. We wish you the best at this weekend's Estonian Open. Anything that you'd like the fans at home to hear? Uh, nothing much. much uh, what's the stream? What's the post produced coverage? And uh, yeah, keep throwing. Hope you guys are here next. <laughs> Best of luck to you, man. Thanks yeah. for joining us. Thanks. All right, here's Tinja Weissenen from Roma, Finland. It's good to see you today, Tinja. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. 
So you've played just two two A tiers this this year in Finland. Uh, you 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 took third place at your last A tier in Prajudis Pro Tour Oulu. Yes. What what is it that motivated you to to travel uh, to Estonia to to play this event? Well, uh, I wanted to come to play at least one Euro Pro Tour competition. So and this is pretty close to Finland, so it was pretty easy to travel here. And uh, well. This was great timing for the season, so I wanted to come here. So, so what is it about the European Pro Tour uh, that that you that you wanted to make sure that you at least played one of them? Uh, well, it's a bit bigger than Finnish Pro Tour, uh, so that is the main reason. And I wanted to travel maybe somewhere else than in Finland play. Yeah, it's cool. It's it's pretty special um, uh, for me, just as a fan of the game, um, to to see this new tour rising up and and giving people such as yourself an an opportunity to do just that, to to have an excuse to travel and to also potentially you know make a career out of the sport. Yes. Yeah. So, what kind of expectations do you have uh, he heading in to to this event? Well, it. It's been a little bit over a month since my last competition, so I'm just trying to focus to my every shot and play my own game and just have fun. Well, can you can you share a little bit about your game? Like, what, what kind of skills should we expect from you? Are you, are you a backhand dominant player? <laughs> yes, I'm definitely a backhand player. Uh, I mostly use backhand and... Um, well, I'm trying to make all of my putts. <laughs> That's my like, what is it? Uh, Strong suit. Strength, yeah. Strength, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. Well, are there are there any players that uh, that you've kind of modeled your 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 form after over the years? And not really. I've been playing since 2014, and it's just been what it is. Cool. Is, how do you, how do you feel like this this course is is, is setting up for you? It's pre, it's pretty technical. Yes. It seems to to be on par with uh, with courses uh, in Finland, in the technicality and and with all the OB. Um, are are there any you know holes specifically that you that you think about when you think about Kurvema? Um, not really. I just like this course a lot, uh, and it's pretty technical. Yes, but I think it's pretty good for me. Uh, I don't need that long throws. Uh, I just need to hit those gaps. <laughs> uh, who do you consider your biggest rival? And uh, is there someone in the field you're a little bit extra scared of playing against? Well, I'm not thinking that that much. I'm just trying to focus on my own game. But I know Heidi Laine. She's pretty good. And Katie Datte here. They are, I think, pretty good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're also one of the players from Finland who have been around for a while. Played. You're, yes. uh, how do you feel about the up-and-coming generation of players who are improving fast? And uh, yeah, I think it's pretty great to see those youngsters playing. And uh, like two years ago in Finnish Pro Tour, we had only like five competitors competitors in <laughs> FPO and now there's like almost 20. It's great to see new yep. faces. Thank you. It would be great to follow you this week. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Andrew Gum, commentary team. Hi. Uh, how did you find out about disc golf? Um, I heard it from my dad. Uh, she started, he started to play like 2006 maybe. And well, I was eight years old then, so uh, that didn't care me that much. But, but yeah, from him. So you were, so you were slowly introduced to it from your father. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And um, do you have any uh, career goals or plans or expectations? Um, well, of course I want to make this my career, but I need sponsors first, <laughs> and I want to get back to podium in Finnish Nationals someday. It's been a few years from my last podium finish there, but yeah, those. Okay. Uh, what what discs uh, do you like like the most to throw? Like, 
What, what kind of discs uh, are your favorites? Um, I have a mixed bag. Uh, my favorite mid-ranges are rocks and rock trees. And then uh, maybe it's Champion Shrike is my go-to distance driver. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for being here with us today. Uh, so hole, hole one here at Cordovema is a pretty popular one. Uh, hazard all around the pin. There's likely nerves. What are you throwing on hole one? Champion FD. I think uh, I can just focus on getting pretty straight and I don't have to worry about getting all of my power in it. <laughs> Cool. Well, we hope that FD uh, finds itself inside the circle. Yes. And uh, it was nice to meet you, and best of luck uh, with the competition. Thank you. Anything that you'd like the viewers at home to, to hear from you? Um, well, terveisiä kaikille Suomeen. It was cool. Thank you, Tinya. Thank you. Right, and we are here with Matthias Vilota out of Parnu, Estonia. Matthias, you've been making a name for yourself 
as as one of the better players in Estonia. You're currently the the second highest rated player from Estonia, only behind uh, the international star in Albert Tam. How, how did this come to be in such a short period of time? Uh, I don't know actually. I think it's probably hard work and uh, dedication and the love for the sport I have. I like this game so much and I want to keep on growing and uh, getting higher positions everywhere. Yeah, so what 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 does what, is, what is that definition of hard work mean to you? Can you, can you walk us through uh, what what a training session um, uh, uh, mid-season looks like for you? I wake up, uh, get, get play two rounds probably and do some putting. That's basically it. What what about the winter? I'm I'm so curious. Coming from a place where we don't really experience winter too much, uh, how how do you how do you maintain or improve your game um, when it's difficult to go out and and play around in the snow? Uh, it's actually funny. I don't play in the winter. I don't like it. It's so cold outside and uh, that's <laughs> too much snow. And uh, I don't play it. I don't like it. So it would be nice to live somewhere where it, it would be uh, better weather. So you, you don't play in the snow. I don't blame you for that whatsoever. That um, I wouldn't either. Uh, are you able to 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 visit uh, the putting stroke at all, or are you able to to practice putting, or you just don't pick up the disc? Not really. Okay. Yeah, I just wow. rest. So going into the you know the first events of the season, um, how how are you able to kind of find uh, the confidence when when you haven't played for for many months? I think it just comes uh, by if you play more the confidence will come at some point you you, you find your game and you're confident. So what what kind of background in sports did you have but before finding disc golf in 2018? Uh, I actually have played soccer for 10 years. I still play it uh, but not that much. I actually play in the highest league in Estonia. You used to play in the highest league in yeah. Estonia? I was wow. like on the bench but uh, yeah. Okay. Playing. So how how do you feel like uh, that experience translates to your success as a professional disc golfer? I think it helps a lot if you like have a professional sport background. You know how to move your body and uh, to do uh, some like moves and uh, use your hips and legs. I think that helps a lot to get like the distance you need or the technique. Are there are there any other players in Estonia that kind of helped you get to you know the, the the player rating that you're at now. I know that you're from the same city as uh, Kristen. Kristen. Was was her early success uh, at, at all? In, in, did it at all influence your rise? I think it influenced me, yeah, because I saw that someone actually from my my city uh, is playing on the highest level in the world, basically, and that really motivated me to uh, do lots of more work. So what kind of uh, goals do you have for, for, for your career? Do you hope to one day uh, travel and, and compete at, at all the big tournaments in the world? I would love that. I hope uh, that it one, uh, one day it will uh, be like that, that I will be traveling in the US and playing with all the high level players and the full tour would be really nice. Well, it's, it's certainly possible um, at the rate that that you're headed, and and this is this is one of one of the steps. Um, the the European Pro Tour is definitely establishing itself um, a, as one of the premier tours in Europe, and this is your first uh, European Pro Tour. Uh, what do you think about the the course here at the Estonian Open? Uh, I like the course, uh, but uh, luckily, unluckily, I haven't played here uh, much, and I always play bad here, so I'm hoping to fix that problem. <laughs> Uh, hoping to get a good finish and maybe be happy with my game finally on this course. Yeah, hi, Victor Torgesad from the commentary team. I saw you out here on the course today, and I don't think you have anything to worry about. It looked great. Uh, I'm coming. A big thing this year on on the disc golf tour, both in US and here in Europe, has been injuries on on many of the big level high level players uh, have you ever experienced any injuries and how do you work to not get them um, I haven't had like major uh, injuries but actually my hand is like uh, it's hurting a bit but 
it's uh, it's no problem. Uh, I if I play football, so I uh, go to the gym a lot to do like this. Um, how do you say like this body? Uh, you do with body weights, and you like uh, grow your uh, body and muscles, so it prevents uh, the injuries you get. Yeah. Is there something that you have been thinking more of this year when some like high-profile player, like for example, Eagle McMahon, he has been not able to throw his forehand, and is that something you worry about or or think of? No, I don't like to uh, think about negative things, so no. only positive. <laughs> Good to hear. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, Andrew Gum, commentary team. Could you tell us a little bit about your disc golf journey, like how it began? Uh, it began in like 2017 July. Um, I went to play. My my older brother, who lives in Australia right now, uh, he played by that time. And one day I was, um, I had nothing to do, and I took two discs of him, and I went to play around. And uh, immediately I got hooked, and I really enjoyed it. And from that day, I just loved this game so much. Very cool. Do you remember what discs they were? Uh, I think it was Prodigy D1 and Prodigy PA2. Okay, so you had a driver and a putter and you went out there and chucked it and now you're here. Now I'm here, yeah. What a, what a cool journey. Um, you, you, you don't play in the winter, but do you do, you do um, a lot of training? Or like how do you keep the form? Do, do you do anything disc golf related, like uh, biomechanics exercise? I, I play football in the winter, basically, so um, and go to the gym a lot, and uh, I think it's better to do nothing. <laughs> yeah, you're just resting that time and, yeah. and, and taking a break, and then that sounds good. Matthias, thanks for joining us here today. Uh, we we, we want to know uh, out there what 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 hole is is uh, sticks in your mind uh, when you say. That you play this course bad, is there a specific hole that has been giving you trouble in previous rounds? Um, maybe hole 13? It's like all 12. I think 13. It's like this slight turnover, but I can never birdie it. Every time I take a par on this hole, but it's not even that hard. <laughs> well, thanks for being us here with us here today. Is there anything that you would like the viewers at home to hear from you? Uh, in my language or in your language in whatever language you prefer det är så 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 att om man alltså är stående och öppen och låter att kök tulla till gas eller om man provar med väldigt små lustar eller vad så det är allt dubbelt. Best of luck to you this weekend, man. Thank you.
All right, and we're here with Lawrence from Austria. Lawrence, I've been seeing you uh, at several events across Europe this year. Can you talk to us about what, what has motivated you to, to travel and compete this season? Uh, what has motivated me? That's a good question. I mean, I love disc golf, obviously. I love the company I am spending the time with, or the people I spend my time with. And what I enjoyed so far about this whole travel, I met so many old friends and getting to know them much better, traveling with them without a car, like, don't, I never really know how I get to the next tournament or where I stay, but it always, it always works. It's, it's awesome. I love it. I, I'm actually right there with you. I, I've just been floating along and that's, my, my personal part of playing disc golf in Europe is, is, is the company that you get to spend time with and, and, and just the uh, um, spon spontane spontaneous uh, yeah, adventures yeah, that yeah, you have. That's awesome. That's... So you, you, you've, you've played at uh, European Pro Tour in Copenhagen. You took yeah. 16th place. Yeah. And you also cashed at the European Pro Tour at, at the Yardva Open in Sweden. Yeah. Yeah. Can you talk to us about your experience on the European Pro Tour and how it, it compares uh, with other events that, that you've been playing? It's, I think it's the best tour we ever had in Europe. I know, I know it, actually. Um, because better payouts, mo much more professional, and it's, yeah, that's, that's it, actually. Well, that's great. I mean, I, uh, it's great to hear from someone, you know, that lives in Europe and has been competing here since 2016 that you feel like this is the best tour. Um, I, I, I think it is also yeah. the best one that I've, I've been a part of and very promising uh, for players such as yourself. Um, I'd love nice. to hear what, what your, your career goals are for disc golf. Is, is it something that you, you want to commit your, your life to? I'd love to. Actually, it was... It was my life goal. Maybe then I kind of got away because I had big putting struggles and it's, it's kind of heartbreaking every round. It's really annoying and I still have it sometimes, which, which keeps me from really having a breakthrough. I think I could be like, for example, Copenhagen, Yerva. I, if I made my putts, I could have been top five. It's just a mental thing and I have to fight through that. I feel like if I can do that, there is maybe a chance to live from this golf, at least a little bit. But I just want to try it for one year. I don't think the tour life, really the whole year, I don't think it is for me. I'd like to have some routines and you don't have it here. It's, yeah. it's well, good for a little while, but not for like the whole year, I think. Yeah. So I think that your, your struggles are something that all of us who have played the game can relate to. Um, when you step up to that putt and you're just feeling those nerves and, and you, you attempt a putt that you've never seen in your life. And, and not, it's not, crazy, man. It, it's, it's crazy what, what happens uh, during the pressure of competition. But can you share with us and the viewers at home uh, what you're doing to kind of mitigate the, 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 that pressure and, and, and have better putting performances? I mean, when I putt good, when you putt I, good, what 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 has I'm what's able been the to difference? relax. I to not have those yips, those putting yips. That's what it's. That's what it is. I think. I just focus on breathing. I try to get get good breathing and relax. That's when I putt good. But I think that's the way. I just have to get more experience, play more tournaments, and finally get some confidence. Because when I'm there at the pub, I, I honestly, I can't imagine them going in. It's, like, it's just... <laughs> but sometimes it works. And that's good. That's big motivation then. Yeah. Like, European Open was good, actually. Second and third round. I made some good putts. Yeah, how was your experience at, at the, the European Open? One of the largest disc golf events that has ever occurred. It's amazing, man. So many young children. And I even signed a few discs, which is pretty nice. I felt that it was funny. And overall, it's the course is amazing. So many people watching. It's just a sport there. It's not like in Austria. In Austria, we have a few courses, not many players. 
And you go into the supermarket and buy discs. It's, it's so nice. Pretty special That's, place. Yeah. Yeah. So when you, when you travel to, to another country, uh, such as Estonia, to, for, for a competition, what does your preparation for an event look like? How many rounds are you hoping to play? <laughs> well, that's very different, actually. I don't really care. I just go play. I think this course, I have three and a half practice rounds. But it was most... We had three rounds playing skins. That's, that's fun. Like one euro per hole and see how, what happens. That's actually, I think that's good preparation because like it's a little mental also when it comes to six, seven skins. Yeah, it puts the pressure on. Yeah, yeah it it, it's hard to it recreate yeah. pressure in a practice round. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that um, a lot of for a lot of people, it's that exact topic. It's like translating the putting stroke from practice into an actual competition round where people are watching and yeah, people people are keeping up with your score and and every putt counts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so how does your, how, how are you liking the course and how does your game set up for Cordoba? I think it, set up, it sets up good. I feel comfortable on the, on the drives. And the course here is amazing. It's different from the courses we played before. It's easier than European Open or Sula. Sula was tough, but more technical and definitely more scorable, I would say. Well, thanks for joining us here at this, at this interview. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Yeah, man. Is there, is there anything else uh, that you would like people uh, back home in Austria to, to, to hear from you? Yeah, I want to thank everybody who follows my rounds, who writes me after I play good, or maybe even after I play bad. And yeah, I want to thank all the people here, making it such a good time for me and having so much fun. It was the best three weeks of my life, I would say. It was super nice. And one, one final question to close it out. What are you throwing on the difficult hole one island hole? Um, probably going R Pro Rhino. Pretty beaten. That's old school. That's my disc of choice, yeah. I think. Good to see you this week, Lawrence, and best of luck to you, man. Thanks, Nate. So we're And we are here with Jakub Semerad out of the Czech Republic. 
Jakub, it's great to see you again, man. Nice to see you. You've been really making a name for yourself this season. You've cashed at every event that you've played in. You won a Euro Tour, A tier event. You took second at the Sula Open in a now famous playoff with uh, with Greg Barsby, yeah. and and you just took 16th at the European Open event last year. Can you talk to us about um, how how this season is matching up with your with your goals and and what is it about your game that has uh, allowed you to shine? Yeah, actually, I'm really surprised that I'm playing that good. I was just expecting to play the tournament and enjoy the game, and I'm like uh, everything is going well for me. I don't know what what is it, but maybe I'm like uh, consistent more, and I'm putting a little bit better than than in the past. But yeah. Yeah, your your putt is really what sticks out to me and several other uh, fans of the game. Um, not too many people putt as fast as you yeah. do. Can you talk to us about the development of that putt? Where where did where did it start? It started uh, because I have a trouble to putting in the wind, so I started to putt it really hard, and I am doing it right now. So yeah. And, and do, do you ever feel, you know, some people say that you live and die by the spin putt. Yeah. You know, if the spin putt is online, it's working. It's great. Yeah, I but as soon as it gets offline, yeah. you start having those comebacks. Yeah, exactly. Comeback it, happened, it happened a couple of times on last week on the European Open. Yeah. I had a lot of comebackers, but I was lucky to make pretty much all of them. So, yeah. Yeah, and we did see that you played on one of the one of the feature cards. Yeah. Is that correct? You played yeah. with Eagle McMahon and, and Paul Macbeth. Yeah, exactly. And so, can you can you talk to us about what that experience was like uh, for for yourself for your own competition, but also what was that experience like for you to witness uh, the McBattle start on a yeah. card that you were on? Yeah, exactly. I'm just like a couple. Of a couple of months ago I was just like watching them on, on this golf network and now I was able to play with them. It was really awesome. They are really nice and they are really great players so it was it was nice and the battle between them was it was something ridiculous. They are so great. It was a pretty special battle yeah. and, and, and really special that, that you were chosen to, to, to compete um, during that first round. I think well, well deserved uh, from your performance uh, at Sula. And I'd also like to, to talk a little bit about the battle that you, that you had with, with Greg out there. Um, what, what kind of memories have you, have you taken from, from, from that playoff in Norway? Yeah, it, it was really fun. Uh, Greg is a really nice guy. I enjoyed it with him so much. Uh, I was playing pretty much my best game of all time, so I am happy that I made my name in the Europe and even maybe in the US. So yeah, it was fun and I'm I actually beat him last week last week in Europe in European Open, so I'm I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> and did you make sure to let him know? Yeah, yeah, I Yeah. <laughs> And and to answer your question, you you are uh, making yourself known in the United States a as well. And so I want to I want to hear from you uh, how it kind of affects your your confidence. Um, we've heard from players in the past that you know a couple good events and it just kind of snowballs. Do you do you feel like you're heading into this European Pro Tour with more confidence than you started the season? Yeah, exactly. I'm right now. I'm feeling really good on my, especially on my driving. Not too much on my, especially in Circle One X. I'm still struggling a little bit sometimes. But like you said, um, it's like a snowball, so I'm really looking forward especially to play in the US because I think I have a good chance to take some good, good places on the events. So you said you've been driving pretty well, and Cordovema is a, a super technical course, a lot of woods and a, a lot of OB. Um, I, I want to hear specifically, you know, what 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 tools you're using um, out here at this course. What what shapes are you really confident in, um, and with what discs? Yeah, I'm throwing. I think a lot of like getaway, which is like a nine-speed straight fairway driver, like Heiser flips. I'm not using too much too much like drivers on this course because it's not that long, and uh, I'm throwing a lot my harp and. 
I am not using forehand too much on this course because the shapes are a little bit better for backhands. Yeah, but I so far love, love the course. It's amazing. Uh, one thing that I have heard more than once when your name has been mentioned uh, has been, oh yeah, that's that guy with with the fox. <laughs> can you can you explain what what was the deal with that fox that you had in yeah, the European I, Championships? We were just like thinking what I should do in the like player player info before the before the round. So they like uh, they like pretty much not forced me, but they like. Uh, Say to me that I should do the thing with the fox be before the before the tournament before the last round on European Championship. So I did it, and it it was like a meme on the internet. So it's funny. <laughs> yeah, it seemed like it <laughs> it really worked. It got stuck to people. Yeah. Uh, another thing I I just thought about is is there at any point in your career that you remember when you realized that yeah I can actually make this. My my profession, I can be a professional disc golfer. Like yeah. when, or has that happened, or if so, when? I think it happened like two weeks ago in Sula, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because before it, I was just like, I was I was good, but I was wasn't like known for, in the world. So, yeah, now it's really good. And where do you see that your career will end up? In a few years. Yeah, I would like, love to play a disc golf pro tour in the US. That would be awesome. And also, the, this tour, what I have heard, is really good one. And I'm looking forward to play my first tournament of this tour. Okay, yeah, Andrew Gum from the commentary team. That was going to be my question: was what are your thoughts about the <laughs> European Pro Tour? But you answered it already. Are you planning on uh, playing any uh, other European Pro Tour events, or will you be in the states then? Yeah, maybe, maybe I will play the finals. If oh. I will qualify for the All-Star event in Spain, yeah. okay, cool, that, that would be, be great. awesome. And because I'll be in US in August, and yeah. I'll play some Czech tournaments in September, so I will not be able to play more events this year. Okay, well, good luck, and I hope we see you there in Spain. Yeah, thank you, Jakub. It's been a pleasure to 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 meet you and and see your game this season, and. Uh, we wish you the best at this uh, weekend's European Pro Tour. Your first European Pro Tour, yeah, it correct? Is. It cool. is. Cool. Well, we wish you the best, man. And uh, is there anything that you'd like to tell the viewers at home? Yeah. Can I ch say it in Czech? Of course. Yeah. So, já bych chtěl poděkovat všem, kteří mě sledujete, kteří mě podporujete. Je to neuvěřitelný všechny ty zprávy na Instagramu a na Facebooku. Uh, moc vám za to děkuji a snad se potkám s váma někde v Česku na hřišti. Takže díky moc. Yeah, thank you. Best of luck, Jakub. Thank you.
And we're here with Jalte Hinsen out of Esberg, Denmark. It's good to see you, Jalte. Yeah, good to see you too. Yeah, we had the chance to meet uh, earlier this year at the Memorial Championship yeah. in the United States. What was that experience like traveling to the U.S. for disc golf? It was great. Um, I went over there to uh, kind of get a little bit of a feeling of how it was, just playing the two first events. Um, and it was uh, quite different from over here. Um, so it was a good experience for sure. Great time. Yeah, so you've only been playing since uh, 2020. Yep. How is it that you found the game in Denmark and, and what has inspired you to, to commit so much of your life to becoming a professional? Um, I found it through uh, YouTube, actually. Just, yep. to, just yeah, Can you explain further? Uh, YouTube just sent you a video. Yeah, it was on my recommended page. Okay. I think uh, 2019 Worlds or something. Joe Mess. Joe Mess. Uh, I watched that and I was like, oh, I, I think I, there's maybe a course like close by to where I live. So I, I went out with some friends and, uh, and tried it. And, you know, we uh, just fell in love with it, played every day. And then uh, some local guys said, hey, you should come and join our tournament. And then we did that and finished pretty good. And then I think the fire kind of started from there. I was like, okay, I'm going to win this next year. Did you win? Uh, yeah, so of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so... Uh you know, K KJ Naibo is, is obviously one of uh, the best disc golfers from Denmark. It, definitely the most successful disc golfer out of your country. Sure. And he told me that you are the future of disc golf in Denmark. So, so. how did that, how did it happen in, in, in three short years that you became uh, one of the best disc golfers in your country? I think... Well, yes, pr there is probably a, some talent in there, but I also practiced from that day that we did the tournament until now, basically every day, almost. There's not a day when I don't have a disc in my hand. I'm either putting, driving, or doing something. So a lot of practice, and I did a lot of good indoor practice in the uh, off-seasons. I think that helped a lot. So, pro yes, from practice. And it, you, you've definitely uh, impressed a lot of people with, uh, with your speed off of the tee. Can, can you explain to the viewers, uh, when did it really click for you, how to really get the disc up to speed? Did you model your form after a specific player? Did you watch YouTube videos? Uh, I th the player I gravitated towards the most from the start was Eagle. He obviously has a lot of speed. Uh, I watched a lot of his videos, tried to emulate some of that form. Um, and then I did it like at a field. I put uh, like a soccer goal or something, like a mark out there for 500 meter feet and said to myself, I'm not going home until I hit that mark. So I got a lot of speed out of that. And then after that, I tried to like get all the form into to it afterwards. Um, if, if there was one kind of tip that you, you, you could share with, uh, with me personally, but also with uh, you know, viewers at home, how to get to throw further? It's everything coming together. It's the timing of the feet to the legs to the rotation of your upper body. And um, yeah, getting a good long reach back definitely helps. So you've played quite quite a, a few events this season. You've you've had kind of an up and down year, mm -hmm. at least from the outside looking in. But we'd love to hear how your season has matched up to your expectations. Mm, this is the first year I'm out traveling, really. So I said to myself, I I won't have any expectations. Uh, I think I've done that quite good, not having any any expectation coming into an event. Um, <clears throat> yes, it, it, it has been really up and down, but I'm just really happy to be out here and, and learning from the first year. And that was the goal of this year, just to learn, to be out here, see, feel how it is. Um, 
and then hopefully for the next years I can be a more consistent and be in there and play for the win as well. Yeah, so what what are your goals moving forward? Or do you plan to to, to, to get dedicate more of your time to, to disc golf in future seasons? Yeah, for sure. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do it full time next year, hopefully. Uh, of course, it depends on if uh, if if it can be funded by sponsors and myself. But I would like to do it the full year next year, just only focus on disc golf training and actually getting the, the good training in the gym as well. Uh, I think I still need to, some training there if I want to get better. Um, so the, the future goal is to do this as, as my life in some way or, of, or the other. And so what does that mean for a player from Denmark to commit to the game full time? Will, will you be playing the entire European Pro Tour next year? Yeah, yeah, that's it. I haven't figured out totally what I'm gonna do yet. Uh, I have some 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 friends out here uh, who's also gonna commit to disc golf next year, and we're kind of trying to figure out how much time do we want to spend in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and how much time do we want to spend uh, here. But I think it's gonna be like half the year in the U.S. maybe, and then half the year in Europe. Um, hopefully, playing as much of the biggest events as possible. Um, for sure. And you, you're one of the few players that have actually played both a Disc Golf Pro Tour event and an EPT event. Um, how, how do you think they compare? Well, the Pro Tour has some, some years of head start, of course, so they're obviously uh, more used to whole, uh, like having these big events. Uh, so it's almost perfect if you go to a pro tour. Everything is taken care of, and there's obviously more money going into that. But I think uh, these guys are doing a really good job for the first year of having a European pro tour. We have the live coverage, and we have press conferences, and all that you want to have. Um, I think it feels like a professional event every time we go out. Um, yeah. Cool. We've got one last question from you. Uh, we're curious what you're gonna throw on the very nervy hole one here with Hazard all around the circle. I tried some different shots. Uh, I want to be throwing my tactic, but I want to be throwing my tilt even more. <laughs> And Yalte Henson, thank you for joining us for this interview. Best of luck this weekend, man. Thank you so much.
All right, and we're here with Morten Brenna from Kristensand, Norway. It's good to see you today, Morten. Hey, good too. So what, what, is, what is the disc golf scene like in the town that you're from? And how did you find it? And how did you become a professional? Uh, uh, I don't know, like, uh, I was just out to uh, play. A friend of mine asked if I wanted to join and try it. And, uh, and I said, yes, uh, of course, uh, let's try it. And uh, after that, uh, we played every day <laughs> since that time. So uh, yeah, and uh, like the community there of disc golf had just grown every single day and it getting bigger and bigger. But, yeah. So what what really inspired you to to commit to playing like professional events? I know for a lot of people it's just a, a hobby that they do play with their friends. But what kind of pushed you to to start signing up for pro tournaments? I was uh, the buddy that asked me to try. He was uh, like both of us uh, want to like. We played just for fun at first, and uh, got uh, got better and better, and start uh, start playing some competitions. And uh, he he the, uh, he got uh, he got to the very good, and I was like, come on, I want to be as good as him. And uh, we start pushing each other, train a lot, and uh, we thought, hey, uh, let's do more. And uh, we did. And uh, at one point, I was like, uh, no, it's not enough for me. I want even more I want to go out in the world and try so I start training more and more and uh, yeah and now I'm here yeah so I'm curious <clears throat> what what does training look like for you I mean I know it's it's somewhat cold in in your homeland are you, are you training throughout the winter indoors no I train uh, if it's a football field there I try uh, if it's too much snow, I maybe go inside. But uh, south of Norway is uh, not very much snow. Uh, it's like we have a week or two in the year, maybe a little bit more with snow. Then it's n almost not snow there, but it's cold. So it's uh, we can go outside and uh, uh, practice on the football field because uh, the field gets so hard because of uh, it's so cold. So the players, uh, football players, want to uh, train. So then we can do it. So. Yeah, so it's a uh, little bit inside and a little bit outside and uh, we are a group of players that uh, go inside like two to three times a week and put inside though. So it's a little bit inside and a little bit outside. Cool. Are, are, are you a player that, that likes to, to, to consume disc golf content? Have you, have, you, have you modeled your game after watching players uh, from other parts of the world? Yeah, like uh, my my playing style at first uh, is uh, based on uh, Simon and Eagle and uh, after a little while I uh, like made my own of uh, those techniques so and I started pushing myself and uh, get better on straight lines and then I watch uh, Paul uh, play very much straight lines and uh, I like to play straight so I was trying to like take those three guys to make some of my own and uh, I think I've got a pretty good uh, technique and uh, a game out of that so yeah. Yeah so your first event of the year was actually an, a European Pro Tour event in Copenhagen. You've played several of the European tours and you just played the European Open and cashed in the major. Congrats on, on, on cashing uh, at the major. You. How, how, how do you feel like the European Pro Tour sets up with uh, some of the other tours that you've played across Europe? Uh, I think it's uh, very good and professional, uh, getting uh, more. This is my first time outside uh, Norway traveling and touring, so I don't, I really didn't know what to expect. So uh, I've just had a great time here and uh, it's been a very, I think it's been a very good, uh, yeah, our touring here on uh, the different uh, tours, so yeah. Hi Morten, Victor Togestad, the commentator on Disco Stream. Um, yeah, you mentioned you started off on the European Pro Tour in Copenhagen. Then we have seen quite a lot of Norwegian success, especially in uh, Jarva, in the stop there. I think we had three Norwegians in the top five or something. Yeah, that's right? correct. Yeah, if I remember right, you were not there. I wasn't there because uh, I... To be honest, I forgot about the tournament, so I didn't realize it was going to happen. So uh, when I like got uh, days off from work uh, early this year, I had actually forgot the tournament, so I couldn't get the days off to go there. That's uh, the reason I wasn't there. 
And how did it then feel to, to watch your your <laughs> fellow countrymen uh, uh, succeed that well and you weren't there yourself? Uh, it was a little bit hard that I wasn't there, but uh, I'm very happy for everyone, like for Kvesat and uh, Hope uh, and uh, Eivind and Knut, they did very well and put Norway on the map. So I'm very happy for them, but uh, I really wish I was there. <laughs> how, how do you feel that um, those players that you mentioned, at least two of them are here, uh, also this weekend, how do you think that you and uh, your fellow Norwegian players are gonna perform this weekend? Uh, for myself, I hope I will do very good and uh, I like the course, so yeah, but uh, for Knut and uh, Eivind, uh, especially for Knut, I think the course fits him pretty well as well, so uh, maybe he will do good, but uh, we have to wait to see. Uh, hopefully I can beat them. Yeah. And in what way do you think that the course suits you? Like what, what do you consider being your strengths? And, uh, uh, like a little bit of... Uh, I can use the mid-range and uh, fair drivers. Uh, I love to throw fair drivers very hard. Some, uh, some longer holes is where people go distance. I go uh, fair driver, just punch it a little bit extra hard. So yeah, and it's, it's a nice course, so it fits me. Hi, Andrew Gum, commentary team. Are you playing any more APT events this year? Uh, I'm not sure yet. Uh, like my season is almost done. Uh, I have uh, Belgian Open. Uh, it's the next outside Norway, uh, and I have RPM Open. And after that, I don't know yet, but uh, maybe it will be more. Maybe not. So yeah. I just have to wait to see. If you qualify for the All Star event in November, would you go to Spain? Probably. Yeah. Sounds good. Good luck, and I hope we see you there. Thank you. Morton, thanks for joining us today. Good luck this weekend. Is there anything that you'd like the viewers at home to hear from you? Uh, I don't know. Hey, at home. Uh, thanks for the support, and uh, yeah, I'm having a good time. I hope you have, so yeah. Best of luck. Thanks. The Estonian Open. Thank you.